Hey all, Russ here at Rear TV. Welcome. Check it out. This is Kingman. This is Stockton Hill Boulevard. We're heading north. Gonna have a little fun today. Look, we got blue sky, perfect temps. Gonna run up and uh, see how much water's in Lake Mead. It's been all over the news channels. That'll be a fun little drive. Go up and see some Joshua trees. Maybe you can run down to the Colorado River where all the rafts come in. I thought it'd just be a fun trip for a fun day. Kingman's in northern Arizona, if you don't know this area very well. Really, we're less than 100 miles from Vegas from here. You got mountains all around. Really nice area. We're up in elevation here. Uh, temperatures are usually uh, 10, 15 degrees cooler than the lower desert. That's why it's such a popular area here. Okay, here we go. We're gonna head about 30 miles out Stockton Hill Road here and uh, cut on up to Mead View. here we go hey today's Thursday May 18th Sunday the 21st going to do a live stream be sure to check in hopefully we'll start around 4 p.m. 7 on the East Coast once again that's Sunday the 21st going to do a giveaway actually going to talk about the up-and-coming travels of RVR TV this summer Q&A, all kinds of cool stuff. Be sure to tune in Sunday. Also, be sure to go to RVRTV.tv, sign up for the newsletter, got free uh, screensaver downloads, all kinds of new merch, including a new Instapot cookbook. This is a pretty ride up through here. You got the mountains, you got huge ranches and tree farms, all kinds of stuff, horses. Plus going out this way is Grand Canyon West, the western end of Grand Canyon. That's where that big skywalk where you can actually walk out, look straight down into the canyon. They got a glass floored uh, walkway. <laughs> I filmed that a couple years ago. Make sure you check out that video. All right, as soon as we get out here a little farther, speed picks up. Look at that, watch for cattle. They got signs all over about the cattle on the road here. Plus, look how green everything is. I mean, Everywhere you go, it's green. The amount of rain, snows, everything, it's just incredible what a spring this has been uh, for the entire southwest. I mean, the reservoirs are filling up. They can't even handle the water down around Phoenix. They're flooding. All the dams down there are spilling over now, and it's melting. Even up at Flagstaff, they're still skiing. That was on the news here locally, too. A 
I've always enjoyed driving up this road. Well maintained. Really not a ton of traffic. All kinds of tree farms out here, uh, huge. Developed farms, all trees. Plus, uh, Joshua trees grow wild up here. They, there's actual forest. We'll stop, we'll check that. That's on our way into Meadview. Right here, look at there, there's a few Joshua's. They'll get thicker and thicker as we go uh, up the road here. Must be the perfect temperature, climate, everything for him. Okay, Stockton Hill Road ends here. Gonna make a right. This is Pierce Ferry Road. Matter of fact, we'll actually go to Pierce Ferry Landing later on today. That's where the Colorado is, Colorado River. But here's where a bunch of them farms are. Huge. There is a gas station out here. Now, this road here, if you went back the other direction, would take you over to Highway uh, 93, which would take you up to Vegas. Goes through Dolan Springs, all that. There's one of the big farms there on the left. And there's a little gas station here. I'm going to stop a second, change the camera batteries where we head on up the road. Kind of like a little oasis in the desert, huh? <laughs> cool. All right, this won't take long. Also grabbed a cup of coffee back there. Good little pit stop. A lot of the tour buses that go up to the Grand Canyon West stop there all the time. Now we're going to see a whole bunch of Joshua trees. Both sides of the road, as far as you can see. They are just covered in here. There's a little stop right up here on the right. A little pull out will stop check them out. Also this Diamond Road, Diamond Bar Road, that'll take you all the way out to Grand Canyon West. Here it is, good little pull out. They actually have a park, a walk around park. I filmed that before last year. But look how green everything is. Look at this. It is so different. Wow, putting in big power poles. Look at that. Meadview's really growing. I mean, it boomed. Last couple years in property sales. And we got some color. Look at this. Flowers are still blooming after the middle of May. And look at the Joshua's. You know, when I was here, when I edit this, I'm gonna put in a picture from last year of what it looked like here. Last year at this time, it was totally dried out. Everything was brown and just awful looking. But look at what all this rain has done. Absolutely incredible. Green 
<laughs> you know, these trees are old. I forget. I mean, it takes decades to over a hundred years. Some of these take to grow this big. They've been around a long time. They've seen a lot of different droughts and all that. But right now, look at this place. It is totally greened up. Mother Nature uh, really watered the lawn this winter, huh? There's a tour bus, but straight down, that's the walkway that you can go around the Joshua's. But as far as you can see, look at this. Green, yay. They said it was totally different up here. I'm believing them now. What a cool place. I mean, there's tens of thousands of acres and nothing but Joshua trees. As far as you can see. Well, cool. You know, the Grand Canyon West, it's uh, run by the Native Americans, the tribes. It costs to get in. They got busing that takes you around the park. It's totally different than the South Rim and the North Rim and all that. But it's still worth seeing. It's definitely something to see to go out in that skywalk. They do not allow filming or pictures. They'll take your picture on it and then sell you the picture. So it's kind of different, still worth it. And it's close, you know, you're not going all the way up to Williams and all the way up top by Flagstaff. You can still see the Grand Canyon right down here, not too far from Vegas and uh, Kingman and all that. And you'll see a ton of buses coming in from Vegas. Yeah, look at all these big power poles. They are really upgrading their power grid here. Been about a year since I've been up here. Big difference. Kind of anxious to see what the uh, lake looks like. Man, let's see what we'll do first. We'll do it quick trip through town, show you what Mead View is. For those of you that haven't seen it before, then we'll cut over and see the water and then we'll end up down at Pierce Ferry Landing down along the Colorado. That's where all the boats come in, all the rafting trips. You know, I was reading where they go a couple hundred miles down through the Grand Canyon. Yeah, look at all these power poles on the left. That's something. Well, you know, Mead View up here really uh, boomed. When all the property spiked, was it starting in, what, 2020? Because there's lots. You can live in an RV up here. It's zoned for it. Well, it used to be. I don't know anymore. But you can buy land and actually live right in your RV on your property. And there's commercial property along the road here. But it's one way in and one way out. There's no getting out kind of dead ends up here into uh, Lake Mead, Colorado River. You got to get supplies or anything, you got to go, turn around and go all the way back to Kingman or even as far as Vegas. Yeah, 
yeah, there's a house. But there's a lot of people that live up here. You know, there's RV parks. Very RV friendly up here. Cute little town. And somewhere up here, I think we're getting close, there's even a dollar store. Here it is, right here on the left. Alright, here's town. Make a right. Keep going straight, that dead us into uh, Colorado River, Lake Mead. Let's cruise town. Those mountains straight ahead, that's the back side of Grand Canyon West. That is the Grand Canyon Mountains right there. I wouldn't mind living up here, especially in the winter time. Be a nice little retirement community, huh? Welcome to downtown Mead View. Let's see, we go up one more block. There's their town sign. Flags are flying. Everything's still nice and green here too. Got some flowers. Then there is a gas station. Yep, right here. Mini Mart gas station. We'll do a loop around. So you can buy ice, propane, all that. I think that one RV park was called Happy Trails or something like that. It's here. Big Al's Trading Post. Different restaurants, bars. Kind of cool. They got what those Quonset hut things. Yeah, aren't those mountains pretty? You know, they catch good sunsets here. Post office. Another restaurant there. Looks like. It's like a little coffee shop. And it's open. And a couple motels down here. Up here on the right, they got a big senior center for activities. Here's Chamber of Commerce and uh, what else I got? VFW. We're right back up to the gas station. <laughs> there you go. That's Mead View. But what a cool little place, huh? Kind of perfect. I'd say the only drawback, really not a drawback, is how far you got to go to get supplies. It's a long, long ways to Walmart from here.
Well, what do you say? Let's go check out uh, the water level, see what it looks like. Make it right up here. If I remember right, there's a pull out. Big overlook. We'll stop and check that. Here it is. Look at that, they even got little picnic tables. Little rest area. I don't know if you camp here overnight or not, maybe. I know South Cove, you can't camp there anymore. They closed all that down. There is a campground down towards Pierce Ferry Landing. We'll drive past that later. Local fire department ambulance there. Pretty skies, huh? Got some clouds. You know, it's humid. You can feel humidity in the air. Might catch a thunderstorm later. All right, storyboards up here. We'll check them out. Kind of hard to read. It's talking about the Lost Basin. About prospectors back in the 1800s. They're still gold in these hills. Then they're talking about the ferries that were running across the Colorado. And even part of the Mormon Trail. Golden Hills, I bet there is. Wouldn't you like to strike a big old vein? Oh, look at the water. Man, last year you couldn't even see it from here. Wow. The lake is up. I mean, not dramatically, but my goodness, last year it looked like a river down there. We'll drive down there. We'll drive down to the boat launch. Straight across, that's Nevada. Could you imagine back in the day, way for all these paved roads, they came in here with wagons, crossed the river on uh, ferries, for all the bridges. You know, before they dammed up the river, the river used to get really wide by miles, just like down around Quartzsite and Blythe and all that. Okay, we say let's go check out the water. Very pretty drive and scenic through here. Right, here comes our turn off. Let's do this. We'll go to the left first. We'll go down and see the lake. And then straight on, that'll take us all the way down to the Colorado River. So it's four miles down to the lake. And I think it's six, six miles or so down to the river. We'll make it. It's still early in the day. Right now it's roughly about 10.30 in the morning. There's water. What a good sign. They're right. You know, on the news around here locally, it's been all about water levels coming up. Not only Mead, I mean, Lake Powell's supposed to come up, they say, over the summer, 70 to 90 feet. They're talking Mead come up 
close to 25 feet before it's over. But look at that. Very cool. But this place here is pretty much a ghost town. I mean, no one comes here anymore. Maybe a couple fishermen. They got a dirt boat launch. Well, they did last year. We'll see if they can still do it. But this place is empty. They don't allow camping anymore. You used to be able to camp off to the left. Boondock out there. No more. They just pretty much shut it down. All right. What a long ways down here. You know in 2019 they were still launching boats off this thing. Shows you what it's done. But last year about this time it was devastating. It, it was just declining. If I can tell you right now it's up. Don't know how much. We'll park. I'll walk down. There was a dock laying on the rocks down there, so we'll see what's up. That's it. End of the line. No parking here. <laughs> they spent millions on all these uh, boat launches around Lake Mead. Keep lengthening them until they couldn't do it any longer. Now it's just all abandoned. Who knows, might never get up this high again, but like, oh yeah, it's up. Oh look, the dock's floating. When I edit this, I'm going to throw in a picture from last year of what it was here before. Look at that. That dock is floating. That was laying on the rocks last year. So this, this is up at quite a few feet. A few feet don't sound like a lot, but this is a massive lake. I forget what they say. Every foot of water exposes 30. Oh, look at them. They're all happy. Purple. It exposes 30 to 100 foot of shoreline. But that dock's floating. Pretty amazing. Snow still melting. I'm anxious to see what the river's up then, because last year the river is way down as well. Good to see. Well, over there, look at that. There's boats parked there. They're launching over there. We'll drive over. Those are restrooms up there. It used to be. Cool. perfect temperature but yeah I mean uh, gonna need quite a few more winters get this water back up hopefully with the water coming up they'll uh, be able to manage it better can you imagine all the boats that got launched here though my goodness Well, let's run over to a dirt launch.
Then we'll head down to the Colorado River. To think the water used to be up this high. <laughs> Long time ago. Yeah, you used to be able to boondock out here. They closed all that down. No more camping. Not sure why. I don't know if it was hurting anything or who knows. One thing uh, they tried anyway was the comment because we're at the extreme end of Lake Mead here. I mean, it is a long ways to over to Vegas in. A lot of miles. And there's no other launches, so to boat here, it's almost impossible except for this little dirt one up here. got one ways, one way in, one way out. But I can already tell you, I mean, last year I parked up here and it was quite the hike. <laughs> Get down to the water. And these are little restrooms up here. You know, this is all graded out pretty flat. So they're maintaining it at least. What do you say? We'll park here and walk down, but oh yeah. <laughs> it's way up. So if you're a fisherman, want to come up this way, I'd so you can easily launch your boat. That ski boat there now. I don't know. Probably launch it all right. Yeah, they cleaned this up a lot was really rough and rocky. But you know a little aluminum fishing boat, you can push them things around pretty good. They don't draft much water. Ah, uh, to be a boater again, no thanks. Had my share of it. It was fun while it lasted. <laughs> RVs are bad enough. Oh yeah, you could launch here. You could back out there. They even got, looks like gravel in there. Hopefully you wouldn't sink. But welcome to Lake Mead. Here you go. Across the water there is where that dock is that's now floating. Yeah, someone left their beer cans. Looks like they had a fire here. Yeah, there's a lot more water over there. few thunderheads brewing up over the mountains there. Feels like it could rain, that's humid.
I am so glad I came up here. Curiosity was really getting to me. <laughs> you know, when you see it on the news and you think about it, as many times I've been up here. But you definitely got the place to yourself. You can still day use up here, picnic. Lease of the water up and get down closer and fish. Cool. Well, maybe late this fall we'll come up here and see what it is then. See how much it fills over the summer. It's quite the climb out of here. You drop down uh, a long ways from top up here. And let's drop down again. <laughs> now this one, it's a dirt road. It gets bumpy and slow. We'll go down to Pierce Ferry Landing. Historic Pierce Ferry. Ooh, got a little new gravel here. Now up here is where all the buses park. They take a school bus and they'll go down and get the rafters and then they bring them up to like uh, real fancy uh, limousine buses. You know, I looked online. It is thousands of dollars take one of them rafting trips but that'd be a trip of a lifetime wouldn't it whitewater raft through the Grand Canyon well in the van I gotta go slow I'm averaging about 15 miles an hour, but that's okay. Rattle everything out of the cupboards. You can ATV, see ATVs down here a lot. Especially out of Mead View. A lot of people ride all over in here. Big old wash air, huh? And remember, there's gold in them here, the hills. <laughs> gold in the hills. That campground's right up here. There's also a little concrete building up on that little hill there. And it was used for seismic. When they built the lake, they used to test the ground because they were afraid of the pressure of the water. The weight of the water would cause earthquakes. So even way back in the 1930s, they were checking that out. Here it is. You can camp here. And no reservations required. <laughs> Just kidding. Wow, that's a big culvert pipe. Non-flushable restrooms. There's that seismograph station. Looks like the picnic area needs a little bit of work. 
Tourism at Pierce Ferry, yeah, look at the old pictures. I mean, people have been coming down here for probably since uh, when the lake was created. Even before, huh? Because of the ferry crossings. Civilian Conservation Corps, they built all this back in the 30s. They had some heavy duty pipe. Okay, up there, there's that little concrete structure. Well, it's still a couple miles down to the water yet. But very active road from all the rafters, all the rafting companies. They even drive semis down here, fuel trucks, all kinds of stuff, buses. Wow, look at those clouds, huh? Thunder bumpers maybe, huh? This would be a flash flood area. Of course, probably wouldn't happen. But back in the old days where they built the dams in uh, Colorado, used to flood. If you get a chance, drive down in there and check it out. It is really rough through here. Okay, we're getting close, almost down to the river. Yay, made it. Look how they have it paved here. <laughs> Parking areas. Now, I've heard people camp down here. I don't know. I know the campground you can. I don't know about right here. Probably. Oh, there's one of the school buses waiting for rafters to come in. Oh, cool. We're going to see some boats, some rafts. There's one of those semis that pick up all the supplies. perfect. Wow, the river is way up. Cool. Alright, let me get parked. Check it out. They unload the rafts into those semis. They start clear up at Marble Canyon. Way up river by, uh, up in Utah, up by Page. That's how far those guys come down. But look at the river, it's up. I think there's a raft coming down now. Thought I seen one. But yeah, last year the grates were exposed by the ramp. Here it is. They pick the passengers up early in a different boat. Then they bring down all their supplies. Western River Expeditions. Man, look at all the stuff they take with them. All the steel cabinets. All kinds of stuff.
Pretty cool, huh? Looks like they're going to dock it, get ready to unload it. Well, we'll go up to the landing, check it out from up there. Just might see a few raindrops. Look at them clouds. What a pretty place this is. Big parking lot is where I parked last year. There it is, mighty Colorado River. Feeding Lake Mead is where it all empties into. Yeah, they can get quite a bit of stuff in that semi. I remember last year I talked to one of the truck drivers. They actually come down a day early, camp the night in their truck. And then they wait. There's a long waiting period for all the rafts to come in. I will find pictures from last year and put them in here. Look how much lower the river was last year. All that metal grating was exposed. So you can really definitely see it's up several feet, just the river alone. Here's a storyboard talking about the ferries that used to run through here, Colorado River crossing, how far back they date, 1876. It's still Arizona across the river, so it goes up quite a ways. But the mighty Colorado, part of the Mormon Trail, I mean it's history upon history here. Good to see all the water though. What a slice of heaven down here. That direction's off towards uh, the lake where all the water dumps in. There's the road we just came down. Pierce Ferry Road. Campgrounds up there. Must see. Get on down here and check this out if you ever get a chance. It's called Pierce Ferry Landing.
What a fun day. We're going to get out of here before it starts raining. All the way from Kingman up to Mead View. Got to see the lake. It's up. Water's up. There's that emergency pole. Supposedly, if you're emergency, you light flashes, they come get you. <laughs> then all the way down here to the Colorado River. There's one of them limo buses waiting for the rafters. Then they haul them back to Vegas, I think. All right, be sure to check out RVRTV.TV. Sign up for the free newsletter. Screensaver downloads are free. We got that live stream coming up Sunday on the 21st. All kinds of cool stuff. Summer travel starts just in a couple weeks, right in June. Can't wait. Journey continues. Talk soon.